Welcome to the Baseball Rules Challenge. This is the Titanic Struggle Edition. We've got Marty and Tom Brenneman and Greg Gibson, the umpire behind home plate here today. I'm Chris Welsh, and uh, welcome to our show. Um, Greg Gibson, uh, what are you doing here during the baseball hiatus? Uh, things are shut down. You're in eastern Kentucky, and uh, what do umpires do when there's no baseball? Unfortunately, eat. Um, being <laughs> home. No, it's, it's been, it, you can't go out to eat. So my wife and I, I've grilled a lot. You know, we've been here as a family. It's been kind of crazy. You know, you, you see kids out riding bikes. We've eaten as a family just about every evening. Mom and dad live right over the hill. So my mom, you know, Sunday cooked. My mother-in-law cooked the other night. So, you know, we're clannish, Eastern Kentucky people, hillbillies. We all get together and eat. So that's what, um, been working around the farm a little bit, then doing a little insurance, as Marty knows, and uh, just hanging out, waiting on a phone call, ready to go. So uh, I think we're going to be out there soon. Well, I hope so, too. Uh, Marty Brenneman, uh, you you know, your timing is always perfect and maybe never more perfect than it was when you retired last year to make this your first year of retirement. What are you doing? Chris, I'm just hanging out, pal. We've been, man, and I've been sequestered here, and I uh, Given my age and the fact that I'm the quote one of the high risk folks uh, demog uh, uh, demographically, I uh, I'm I'm been very cautious about where I've been and who I've rubbed elbows with and and that sort of thing. And uh, we've gotten through it amazingly well. Oh, good for you, Tom Brenneman. I know you're always on the move. Uh, uh, what are you doing nowadays? Just hanging out with the family, Chris, trying to keep everybody healthy. Thank God they are, and uh, and uh, we've had some great great time together as a family, as Greg mentioned. Uh, you know, this time of year, none of us would be eating dinner with our family from time to time. We're all looking forward to getting back to work. Don't get me wrong and thankful for it. But uh, it, it's really been uh, a blessing in many, many ways. And everybody's doing all right. Great. Great to hear that. All right, Marty, you, you broadcasted a lot of basketball and a lot of baseball throughout the years, ABA, NCAA, uh, minor league uh, baseball, major league baseball. Uh, what rule set do you feel most comfortable with, basketball or baseball? Well, I've been around, I've been uh, away from basketball for probably, God, I don't know, 14 years and or longer. So I, I feel like if I have a working knowledge better of one than the other, it would be baseball. Although I'm afraid today in the next 25 or 30 minutes, I may be well exposed. And if I am, I'll hold you accountable for that for the rest of your living day. And Tom, uh, you, you know, you've been a football announcer for a long time. You've done basketball too. You've even yeah. done bowling. I'm not yeah. going to ask you about the bowling yeah. rules. <laughs> uh, I'm going to ask you uh, whether you feel more comfortable with NFL or baseball rules. Well, I mean, I'm not going to say baseball because I, there's no doubt I'm about to be exposed in this show here in a few minutes. So, you know, football is, is an interesting one. I, I'd be interested to hear Greg's uh, thought of it sometime later is, you know, football, you have your core rules, but then they're, they're always changing. They have a rules committee, and they'll experiment with different rules. Last year, the pass interference rule offensively and defensively and using replay and that kind of thing. But, Chris, as you know, and my dad knows, the one sport I know all the rules because I was never wrong when I was the coach in boys and girls basketball. Sure. On the east side of Cincinnati. Kick and tail, taking names, and getting peed up from time to time. <laughs> I love it. Uh uh, I'm going to have to check with the referees in that yeah, 10 under right. league to find that out. Tom. Don't do that. All right, guys, are we ready to play the game right now? We've got the game board up. Uh, we're going to start with the categories, batting, base running, pitching, fielding, scoring, and more. Bad bounces. Marty Brenneman, let's go to you for the first question. Uh, $100 cr scoring and more, Chris. <laughs> All right. I'm shocked by that. All right, Marty, uh, how many stitches are there on a baseball? Well, I'd be inclined to say 132, but instead of the one of All right, well, let's uh, let's go with, uh, how about C108 right here? Yeah, let's see it. <laughs> and that's the answer. How about that, 108? You're on a roll right now already, Marty Brennan, wow. with an early lead over your son. Golly day. How about All that, right. the way things work out? Marty, go today. again. Let's go batting and base running for two. Batting base running for 200. To be in a legal batting position, both of the batter's feet must be entirely in the batter's box and not touching the lines. Is that true or is that false? That's false. Okay. That is correct. 
All right, two in a row for Marty Brenneman. Tom, let's go on over to you now. All right, let's go over to uh, uh, batting and base running for 100. Batting and base running for 100. All right. The batter bunts. The ball hits the ground and bounces up and hits the bat again while the batter is still in the batter's box. The correct call is A, batter awarded first base, B, foul ball, or C, ball is alive and in play if fair. B, foul ball. Okay. All right, correct. Gibby, can, can, can yeah, you believe okay, these I, guys are doing this much this easily? Rule changes. That actually we had put in in 2009. That happened. I had a foul ball hit. The batter had his foot in the box. He started to run, but his whole uh, his left foot uh, was in fair territory. And until 2010, the rule nobody really knew the rule, but that rule got changed, and now it's a foul ball. 2010. It was one of the rules that I submitted. There's two rules that I've actually submitted to the uh, rules committee that we've gotten changed, and that that's one of, that's mine. Because it used to be a fair ball. If hit, any part of his body was over fair territory and hitting, he was out. Huh. Wow. So well, it's yeah. probably a good thing they made that change because it sounds to me yeah, like every time that would ha- that would happen, it, we it would go to review. Everyone thought that that's the way the rule was. So one of my suggestions was after a big. Uh, Mess was let's uh let's get that changed to what everyone thinks it is. Um, good job. Wonderful. Anything to speed up the game, Gibby, is a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> Tommy, your turn. Let's go one more time for you. Let's stay right there. Batting and base running for 300. Batting and base running for 300. All right, take your time with this one. A runner is stealing second base when the batter swings and misses and ends up standing right over the top of home plate. The catcher who caught the pitch and never attempted a throw, starts yelling, I couldn't throw, interference. The ruling is what? A, no interference. The catcher has to make a legitimate throwing attempt or there cannot be interference. B, it is interference. The catcher had no chance to throw. The batter's out and the runner goes back. Or C, interference. The catcher had no chance to throw. The runner is out and the batter remains at bat. I would say A, no interference. Okay. You're correct. All right. Make, Gibby, how about that? What's the story with that play? Make him, throw, make him throw the ball. You know, the rule says hinders and impedes, but, what, you know, it's the major leagues. They need to throw – you know, they, we want to see him try to throw the ball. We want to see a legit throw. Boy. Well, very good. I'll tell you, the Brenneman so far acing this test. Uh, Marty, where do we go from here? Uh, let's go bad bounces for 200, Chris. Let's go to what for 200? Just – Bad bounces. Bad bounces for 200. All right, Marty. Who was the home plate umpire for the first use of instant replay? Oh, September no. 3, 2008. Would it be Joe West, Joe, Joe Walsh, <laughs> Bill, Bill Clem, or Greg Gibson? Well, if it was Joe Walsh, he wouldn't remember it. <laughs> <laughs> it sure as hell wasn't Bill Clem. So we reduced it by two. I'm going to say Greg Gibson. All right. Let's see if we got it. Yep. It is. Gibby, how about that day? How would that happen? Um, we were in um, Tampa. Uh, it was Charlie Relliford, Brian Runge, and Jerry Lane and myself. Alex Rodriguez hit a ball that uh, Brian called fair, and uh, Tampa kind of wanted to challenge. We huddled on the field and it was an ESPN game, and I looked at Charlie. I said, "Hey, we got it. Let's use it. Uh, make you know, make sure we're right." So they, it was back when we went off the field to look at the little tiny box. And uh, <clears throat> as Charlie was going off the field, one of the best Charlie Charlie looked at Joe Girardi with the Yankees and said, "Well, we're about to make history." And and Girardi said, "Make sure history is conclusive." <laughs> so uh, they left me on the field, and during the time, I had balled a very close pitch to Troy Percival. So by the time they got back, I was surrounded by all the Tampa Bay Rays. And, uh, yeah, so we made history. I've actually been involved with, unfortunately, all three. Um, I do a, a, a bit with kids. I call it, you know, my speech is two out of three ain't bad. The first time it was ever used was with Frank Pulley in 1999. I was on the field for that. Then this. And then the first time it was officially used, I was, unfortunately, had the dubious um, honor of being the first guy ever flipped. So I, t- I go around talking to kids and I tell them, 
You know, in the words of meatloaf, two out of three ain't bad. So <laughs> if you can go through life two out of three, that's a pretty good day. Yeah. Pretty good about that. All right. Well, these guys here, are, uh, Marty and Tom Brenneman, are doing better than two out of three. Uh, Marty, I believe it is your board still. Where are you going? Let's go to pitching for 100. Pitching for 100. From the windup position, a pitcher is permitted to fake a pickoff throw to second base. True or false? That's true. Indeed. All right. I think you're four for four, Marty Brenneman, doing a pretty good job right there. I guess give me the easy thing to understand is that you can fake a pickoff throw to second base from either the set or the windup or don't even have to step off, right? Second base is the only place. You can't fake it to third anymore, and you can't fake it to first. Yeah, I was wondering if they're ever going to change that rule because uh, uh, you fake the third and then throw to first, and uh, I'm wondering if they're ever going to take that rule away as well to uh, take that fake pickoff throw to second base away. But, you know, they've talked about it. That, that's one of the things that Tom brought up, the changes the last – we've had more changes in the last 10 years than we've had, you know, my first five years, you know – it wasn't until Charlie Relaford got on the rules committee around 2005, 2006, that they started meeting again. Uh, several of the GMs, uh, Mr. Dombrowski uh, had a big hand in it, Mr. Scherholz, uh, to get the rules committee back meeting annually and talking about some things and trying to make the game better. There were so many things from, you know, that, that weren't relevant, some things that they've changed. They've actually rewritten the rule book. So, <clears throat> you know, uh, we now have another umpire. Brian Gorman is our representative. For years, an umpire wasn't even on the rules committee. Mm -hmm. So Brian Gorman's on there now. So they mm -hmm. together a lot more and they do some things. And uh, so we'll see. But but yes, as Tom said, there's a lot of, you know, we things that change every year. So we got some coming this year. So we'll see what happens. Well, let's hope we get to those rules changes. Tom Brenneman, you've got the board where you want to go. Let's go. Uh, let's go. Batting and base running for four hundo. Batting and base running for four hundred. All right. If a pitch ball makes contact with the bat and ricochets first off the catcher's chest protector and then into his bare hand, how is it ruled? A foul ball, dead ball. A foul ball, live ball. A foul tip, dead ball. Or a foul tip, live ball. Jeez, oh, Pete. My dad's getting layups here, and I'm getting this. All right, you say um, beat. All right, they got tech with the bat, ricochets off the catcher's protector, and then into his bare hand. I'm saying foul ball, dead ball. Foul ball, dead ball, A. Yep. Correct. Man, oh, man, I, I can tell what you've been doing during this baseball hiatus. Right, you've whipped out that rule book. Academy.com. <laughs> Always a good place to go. Yes, it is. Give me, you know, real quick, this is one of the more misunderstood rules about how a ball is either different, a foul tip or a foul ball. Foul tip is sharp and direct into the catcher's mitt or hits the catcher's mitt, and then he catches the ball. That is a foul tip. A foul ball is either uh, touched, stopped, or uh, lands in foul territory before third base so or first base, the, one of the, the bases. All right. Good information right there. Uh, Tom Brenneman, you've got the board for one more question. Let's go batting and base running for 500. Batting and base running for 500. Oh, and this is a big bonus question right here. How much do you want to risk right here, Tom? You've got a 200-point a lead. Hey, hey, we're not playing the U.S. Open here. Put 800 down on that thing. Let's 800. Go. In, the, in the immortal words of Luke Brenneman, let's bo bonus or bust. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. Now, on this particular bonus question, we have a video to show you, and you will be the on-field umpire on this. All right. All right. In this in this situation, Tom, the batter strikes out, and he accidentally kicks the ball as he's running down the first baseline. Doesn't mean to kick it. The ball's in foul territory when he makes contact with it. The question for you now, and you bet. 800 bones on this, whether yeah. you're going to get it right or not. Yeah. Here we go. On this play, now that you saw the play, the batter struck out, kicked the ball while it was in foul territory, unintentionally on his way to first base. A, is it a live ball play on? Is B, a batter out for interfering with the catcher? C, is it a foul ball or is it D, a do-over? Man, I would, I would have thought it would have been uh, something entirely different, so I have no clue. So this is a straight guess. If he struck out, then I'm going to say uh, – I'm going to say B. 
B. Yep. And that's the answer. Gibby, you agree with that one? Yes, that's that's something that we've changed in the in the last couple of years. But yes, he is out. All right. Marty, let's go to you. The last couple of questions in the first half right now on it is your board. Uh, let me have bad bounces for 400. Bad bounces for 400. And that is a bonus oh. for bus too. Oh. All right. Now, now, Tom already doubled up on you. He is a thousand points ahead of you. I know he is. So, uh, so what are we going with here, Marty? I didn't come here to lay up, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I know what that means. I like it. Okay. How many umpires oh. are there in the National Baseball Hall of Fame? We go to one Hall of Famer for this answer. What do you say? Are there six? Are there eight? Are there 10? Or are there 11? Before I answer the question, Gibby, you know the answer to this question? Yes, I do. Okay. I'm going to say eight. Marty, before you make your answer here. I just made it. We're going to allow you one lifeline phone call to the umpire of your choice. And in this case, it would be Greg Gibson. We've got him right here on StreamYard. And uh, why don't you ask Gibby to answer this to help you out? Okay. Gibby? Ten. Ten. Let's see if that is the correct. How about that? Very and good. it is. All right. All well, right. Excellent job well. right there. Wait a minute. You're, you're giving him that is the right answer there? Eh, well, I mean, you know, come on. You, you earn a little something when you're in the Hall of Fame, for goodness sakes. You reminded me of the basketball officials that I used to coach when they were on the floor now. <laughs> I, I, I'm sure that you remind them of a few things as well. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> All right, one more question for you, Marty. Then we'll take a quick break for the first half. What do you say? Uh, bad bounces for 300. All right, bad bounces for 300. Which of these is the is working the home plate? A, the crew chief, B, the umpire in chief, C, the head umpire, or D, the diamond umpire? Diamond umpire. The diamond umpire? Yeah. It would be the umpire in chief. I misunderstood that question because I thought we were talking about when they rotated. <laughs> <laughs> and by the way, they got the score wrong. They gave Tom the 600 points I just got. You know, I'm, I'm going to be able to fix that here while we take our break. When you come back, you're going to get the 600 points. It's going to be, well, a little closer than you thought. All right, so that concludes our first half of our baseball rules challenge our broadcasters rules challenge and in this case of course father son baseball rules challenge we welcome marty and tom brenneman with us uh, greg gibson our umpire and we'll be back right after this it is free to look up any rule on baseballrulesacademy.com no sign up no registration needed to look up the rules simply go to the search box type in your keywords and come up with the rule mlb level high school level college level u triple sa all the way down to little league it's also free to visit the forum area. If all you want to do is breeze in and read some of the articles, no problem right there. But if you want to participate, you must be a free member or a premium member. Our section of expert analysis is a compilation of more than 200 different studies, case studies, expert reports on plays that have happened in the major leagues and at other levels, and all interpreted by experts. If you want to learn and get the same reports that are delivered to major league teams, this is the place to go. Our premiums members, full access. Our free members, selected content. Our video library consists of more than 250 videos, learning videos shot with Major League umpire Ted Barrett and Chris Welsh and a number of other experts. It'll tell you how to get it all done by use of video. Our premium members, full access to each of these videos. Our free members, selected content. Our Academy courses are brand new and they are a big hit. We've got academy courses for pro, high school, and other levels of rules, including quizzes and tests at the very end. If you're a full member, you get full access to each and every one of these courses. If you're a free member, you get selected content. Maybe you like to take interactive questionnaires and quizzes. Well, we've got that for you. At the end of each one of our lessons, there is a quiz where you can take an interactive quiz, get ranking, and find out how you did, and even compete for leadership ranking on our leaderboard. 
Premium members full access, selected content for those free members. BaseballRulesAcademy.com. It will always be free to look up any rule. If you want our premium content, however, I suggest that you log on right now and take advantage of our big sale. Now 65% off our premium membership price. Well, welcome back to the Baseball Rules Challenge, our broadcaster challenge segment. This time, of course, father-son matchup as we go to a titanic struggle. Marty and Tom Brenneman are on the board. Greg Gibson is our umpire. We continue right now. Marty Brenneman uh, with a cool 900 points. Uh, Tom, you are just streaking the field right here. And yep. uh, let's go back to the game board. All right. All right. Back to the game board we go, Tom, for the second half. And Tom Brenneman, I believe it is your board. What do you say right here? Let's go scoring and more for 400. Scoring and more for 400. Okay, Tom, with the bases loaded, a pitch ball deflects off the catcher's mitt and then gets stuck in the umpire's shirt pocket. What's the answer here? A, no call. The ball is live and in play. Umpire or catcher removes the ball from the lodge spot and continues play. Runners may advance at their own risk. Or B, umpire interference, dead ball. Runners must return to base. Or C, umpire interference, dead ball. Runners advance one base. That's an easy question. Are you kidding me? It is. I'm going to go with. Um, I'm going to go with uh, B. B. Yeah, uh, the first trip up for him. Yeah. Marty, you, you, Marty, you want to explain you that, that to us? Easy? No, I thought Tom's answer was right. Yeah. <laughs> well, what's the story there, Gibby? Oh, no, 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 no. I know. I'm sorry. I did not think his answer was right. I thought C was the answer. It, yeah. It, what do I think? It's meant to explain because everyone thinks it should be B. Um, but it, it's an absolute – the defense is going to be irate. Number one, how did the ball get in your shirt? Mm -hmm. We've actually had this happen a couple times the last couple of years where it got stuck in the umpire's equipment. And, uh, you know, that's a hard one to explain, especially when runners are moving up in scoring position. So, um, yeah, I may put that one in, Chris, as a rule change. What we need to do, umpire interference, dead ball, runners must return. That, would, right. save me, that would save me a couple arguments. So. I'll make could it. You, could you imagine that? Could you imagine that play deciding a playoff game? Uh, I mean, hope and pray. Obviously, as an umpire or a fan, it never happened. Yeah. That that would be man. Oh man, chaos. Yeah. It's play. I've been in quite a few playoff games. When your feet hit every morning yeah. during a game, your prayer is, "Dear Lord, please not today. Let do not yeah. let me mess up. Don't yeah. let me be the highlight." So I believe it. I, yeah, I'm going to put that one in. That needs to change. All right. Well. You heard it right here. All right, uh, Tom Brenneman, you just lost the board. Marty, you are up. All right, let me have uh, scoring and more for 200. Scoring and more for 200. And the length of a pitcher's plate. Marty, that would be the pitcher's rubber. The length of the pitcher's plate is what? A, 18 inches, B, 24 inches, C, 28 inches, or D, 30 inches. so funny, Tom. I, do you get all these multiple? I, I wouldn't get any of these right. I don't. You're you're doing good. I'm proud of you. <laughs> um, I'll say B. Yep. And B it is. Nice job climbing right back into it. All right, Marty, you're uh, only 100 behind your son Tom, and you've got the board for one more question. Fielding for 100. Fielding for 100. It is. Marty, a batted ball ends up at rest on top of home plate. This is a fair ball or B, a foul ball? That's fair, fair ball. All right. This is a pretty easy one right there for a veteran broadcaster like you, but there are a lot of baseball players probably out there, Gibby, that don't know that home plate is in fair territory. Home plate is actually in fair territory. They, draw, they set the lines off the uh, point of home plate. Yeah. All right. All right, all tied up. Tom, the board goes back to you. Let's go to um, uh, fielding for 200. Fielding for 200. All right, Tom, what is the maximum length of a fielder's mitt? Good Lord. Nine inches, 11 <laughs> inches, 13 inches, or 15 inches? C. C. 13. And, nope. 
Yeah, actually, you're right. It is 13 inches. That would be the uh, the fielder's glove that you can use out in the outfield. Of course, uh, you can't use a first baseman's glove anywhere but first base. We've seen uh, one National League manager, no longer the National League, Joe Madden, do that a couple of times, where he sends his first baseman in to play, has another guy to come over, cover second base. Uh, but 13 inches is the answer. Gibby, have you ever gotten into a confrontation or a discussion with a player about the length of the glove? We actually – it was about three or four years ago. I went on the field with, um, you see like a seamstress tape, like the blue tapes that, that you wind up. Yeah. We had conscious, we knew two teams were kind of into it. I won't disclose, but anyway, we were told that one team was going to challenge the other team's glove. The other team got wind of it and they were going to challenge their glove. So here I was, um, I'm trying to think who I was with at the time. Yeah. I was with Jerry Davis. And and so here I go on the field and he gave me, uh, if they if this comes down to it, you've got the tape measure to measure everybody's glove. I thought it never came to that, but yes, I went on the field that night with a seamstress. You've seen them, the the blue they they roll it up. You know, you go in to get tailored. Yeah, I went on the field with that in my back pocket. So well, believe me, Greg. Believe me, Greg. My dad and Chris know all about going to tailors and fancy clothes. And all that. <laughs> I know exactly what the hell you're talking about. Off the rack, Gibby. You know better than that. Oh yeah. <laughs> All right, uh, Marty, you're bored again. Where are you going with it? Wait a minute, I just got it. Oh right. no, I'm, I'm sorry, right. Tom. Yeah. It, it, it's your your call, Tom. You're All right. right. Let's go. Let's go score. And uh, you know what? I, you roll the dice. Scoring and more. Five hundred. Scoring and more for five hundred for the big one right here. All right. The most important set of written rules, Tom, was written by Alexander Cartwright of the Knickerbocker Baseball Club in New York and published September 20th, 1845. These 20 rules became known as the Knickerbocker Rules, the, the original 20 rules of baseball. One significant rule, rule number 13, stated that a player could not be put out by what? A, striking out a bat. B, bunting foul with two strikes. C, a player with the ball touching the bag. Or D, being hit by a thrown ball. D. D? Do you say D? It doesn't make any difference. The answer is out. A, striking out a bat. Up until that time, there were no strikeouts. Okay. All right. All right. Fair enough. Come up, Bounty. I like the fact you're going for it. And the games were still quicker. (laughs) (laughs) All right, Marty, back to you with the lead. With the lead. Uh, let me have um, let me have pitching for three hundred. Pitching for three hundred. Oh, nice. All right, Marty. While time is in and the ball is live, a pitcher who is in contact with the rubber may drop the baseball without penalty if he's in the full windup position. B, he is in the stretch position. B, the bases are empty. Or D, he may never drop the ball without penalty. Uh, C. C is correct. All right. With a runner on base, there is no such thing as dropping a ball without being a balk. Right, Greg? Correct. One of the 13 things you cannot do. Oh, yeah. Rub it in. (laughs) (laughs) All right, Marty, back to you. Where are you going? I'll Knickerbocker rules. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> let me let me have uh, bad bounces for three bad bounces for three all right the top edge of the strike zone is a the letters on the uniform b the midpoint between the shoulders and the belt when the batter prepares a swing the midpoint between the shoulders and the belt when the batter is in his crouch or d depends on the umpire <laughs> I know what I'd like to say, (laughs) (laughs) but I'm not going to say it. Um, That's a good question. I'm going to say, I don't might. I I, I have one or two. I'm going to say A, and I'm sure that's not right. I'm inclined to say C, but I'm going to say A. A? And the answer is B. Uh, Gibby, this is one that's a little bit misunderstood, huh? Mm-hmm. Yeah, very much un- misunderstood. Um, everyone does think it depends on the umpire, but but we do. It's when the batter is prepared to swing and hit the ball. That's when you strike zone. A lot of times when you see the box up on television, that's not 
as he's prepared to swing it's where they kind of draw the you know they, they put that up but actually with the technology and everything on us we actually get the video back and we see at the point when the batter start to swing and how they check the line so it's at the midpoint between the shoulders uh and the belt they kind of don't you know I, I guess this is a family rated version but it's uh, they didn't want to say nipple yeah uh, but that's that's pretty much where it's at so right yeah. Okay. You know, and I would imagine that if you have different batters, I know that Pete Rose used to go up there really crouched down and yeah. he would kind of come up when he would swing. Same for Ricky Henderson would start low and end high. Now you got a lot of guys who start tall and they kind of swing down and get smaller as they get going. Uh, that's probably the one part of the strike zone that you want to judge as an umpire. The, the high agree? strike the high strike is what can make you look inconsistent because, you know, they've been, they've been, you know, around the knees, they've been in and out on the plate and all of a sudden they throw one, you know, at the top of the strike zone, the outside corner, you probably not called that pitch all day. And now it's like, Oh, he's in, you know, it's with the technology. Now, you know, I'm an old school guy. I, I what I start with, I finish with, but we've got a young, a lot of our young kids, a lot, I should, I should say kids they are 35, you know, 40 year old men. Uh, the younger guys in the leagues, they shoot the daylights out of that box. They're absolutely incredible. Uh, I'm not as good anymore on that. You know, I'm, I'm old school. When I came up, you know, our job was to, what we started with, we finished with. Our job was to be fair and consistent. So uh, it's not that I don't call it. It's not that I choose. It's just um, it, it's our it, – that that pitch can make you look extremely, um, un you know, inconsistent. Yeah. Hmm. All right, good stuff right there. Uh, after the miss by uh, <clears throat> Father Marty, we go back to Tom. Tom, where are you on the board? Let's go with uh, uh, pitching for uh, four hundred. Pitching Whoa. for four. Pitching for four hundred. Oh, three. We got to go. All right. Is it legal for a pitcher to speed up his delivery to deliver a pitch to the plate to catch a runner trying to steal home? Yes. Correct. As long as you don't change your delivery, I think you're good if you just speed it up. Is that right, Gibby? Correct. All right. I, I'm just kind of curious about something here, Chris. I don't want to chew up all the time, but I, I'm interested in asking Greg, you know, if, if if assuming here on this whole deal that there's a runner at third and no other runners, pitchers oftentimes will make a decision to either work out of the windup or the stretch position. Okay, and we were talking earlier about you can't fake a throw – to third, you can't fake it to first, you can't fake it to second. If you're still on the rubber and you're throwing to home plate, which is another base, what, why is that one okay? Because they consider that on a pitch. Okay, okay, okay. There's three things you can do with the ball. It's either pitched, batted, or thrown. It has to be one of those those things, so okay. they consider that a pitch. Okay. All right, your board is still, Tom. All right, let's go uh, uh, pitching for 200. All right, when starting in the set position, a pitcher must have A, both feet in front of the rubber, B, both feet in contact with the rubber, C, his entire pivot foot in contact with the rubber, or D, any part of his pivot foot in contact with the rubber. D. All right, correct. Oh, you're rolling now, big yeah, You are right. rolling, and Marty Borg goes back to you. We're limiting down the last few questions. Uh, you take it over. Well, I've got to go for the gas. 500 on bad bounces. Bad bounces for 500. <laughs> All right. Runners at first and third with one out when the batter hits a fly ball to left field. The runner from third tags and runs home, and he's safe. But runner at first base, he forgets how many outs there are. And he overruns second base, and he's easily doubled up at first. This is after the runner from third touches home plate. Does the run score, and what should the umpire do? A, no, you cannot score a run when the third out is a runner being doubled up. Or B, if the runner from third scores before the out is recorded at first, then the run does count. Um, I'm going to say B. All right. And he is correct. Uh, Gibby, a lot of people don't understand that. That's a timing play, right? That's a time play. Here's here's what's funny. 
a lot of, you know, a lot of people have my cell phone. And Marty and Tom know Johnny LeMaster, who's from here. Johnny has some grandsons that are absolutely incredible athletes. And it was two summers ago. I was uh, somewhere and I, I looked down at my phone and it, it's Johnny. And I uh, he says, hey, Greg, I'm in the middle of a game real quick. And before I get thrown out, I want to make sure that this umpire. So it was this play here. And, he, you know, and if you know Johnny, you got to know he's like, I thought for sure. You know, but anyway, it's it's kind of funny, but I always refer to this as my Johnny Lamaster play now when I talk about it because <laughs> this is the time he was about to get thrown out of a Legion ball baseball game over this. I'm like Johnny, don't no, he's right, he's right. So well, good stuff right there. Boy, Johnny Lamaster could pick it a little bit, couldn't he? Yeah, he yeah. could. Indeed. All right, Marty. Uh in control of the board, in control of the game. Uh, what do you got now? Man. What'd you say, Tom? I said, man, you're back in front. Let me, uh, golly, Jay, I don't know what to do here. Let me go uh, fielding for 300. Fielding for 300. The number of bases, Marty, a runner is awarded for obstruction is A, one advanced base, B, two advanced bases, C, three advanced bases, or D, determined by the judgment of the umpire. Uh, I'm, I'll say A. It is oh, D, determined no by the, the judgment of the umpire. Uh, what do you guys just guess where there or just make a judgment as to where these runners would be if there was an obstruction, Gibby? If there's a play not being made on the runner, if the runner is obstructed, uh, we place the runner where we determined he would have been had the obstruction not happened. And that, again, that's one of the ones that usually ends up in a pretty good conversation with the manager. So. <laughs> Uh, some guys running obviously we've got some you know we've got some some kids that can fly you know you take that into determination if you know uh somebody that we know that's a pretty fast guy to first base we might give him an extra base and a guy that we know that has a refrigerator on his back we're not going to give him that extra base so um it just depends on the runner you take all that in consideration all right tom back to you where are you going well, I'd like to take a knee at this point, but there's still time on the clock. So let's go. Um, let's go. <laughs> let's, go um, let's go pitching for 500. Pitching for 500, trying to put the old man away. If the defensive team is attempting the hidden ball trick, the pitcher is not permitted to a be on the dirt part of the pitcher's mound. B be in contact with or astride the rubber. C hold his hand in his glove, D, hold the rosin bag in his pitching hand, or E, all of the above? Man, I was going to, right out of the gate, guess A. Um, it's not permitted to be on the dirt of the pitching mound in contact. I'm going to say E. You're going to say E. And for some reason, oh, okay, here we go. It is B. You cannot be in contact or stride the rubber. There's, a, you know, I, I don't know how many times a year you see the uh, attempt at a at a at a hidden ball trick, Gibby. Uh, but take us through some of these things. Well, they can walk any part of. You, you always never take your eye off the ball. The, the worst thing is an umpire you can have happen is be out there on the field, a live ball, and it's like, where'd the ball go? And has it happened to me? Yes, but you start paying attention to what the pitcher's doing right away. If he's, you know, any part of the dirt, he's fine. It's when he either, it's usually a stride, the rubber. He gets close to the rubber. We really start looking, uh, hold his hand in the glove, act like he's got it, uh, you know, hold the rosin bag in his pitching hand. We're probably going to start saying something to him. But uh, the big thing I'm looking for is, is he in contact or stride the rubber without the baseball? That's the cut and dried version. So, so, so these other things he can do, well, on this question, we're 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 not going to let it get to that point. Let's I just say, okay, okay. There's certain things we do to control things when we realize it's going astray. So, like picking up the rosin bag before that gets to be a big. You know, one of the biggest things that I try to do is avoid controversy. Con contrary to my younger years, my my older years, <laughs> I do everything. I promise I can. You know, it's funny because both you guys have seen. You know, my whole career, all you guys. And, you know, as, as you age and get older, you know, and you have kids and they grow up, you think, 
how can I avoid a problem? So mm -hmm. the drive version, Tom, is on or stride. A stride the rubber is the big no-no. So okay. Okay. I'm just going to let those other things happen. The, the technically hidden ball trick that we don't allow is on or stride the rubber. Okay. So, All right. Thank you. Marty, are you the same way? Uh, do you also try to avoid controversy? <laughs> uh <laughs> yeah, that, look, and I, can I tell you something? There, there was a period of time, you know, Greg Gibson and I are good buddies now, but there was a time when if Greg Gibson could have put a hit, a, a contract out on it and got away with it, as well as his brother, he would have done the same thing. And all I was trying to do was just to vent my spleen back in those Greg Gibson early days. Quote, <laughs> I thought I made a crappy call. And I are getting mad at me with, with everything you know and the thing of it is it's kind of funny you do grow up you get older and and you know it's it's there's just a lot of things in life that change and and uh you know and the light, the light for me it, it's kind of fun when we get i love things like this because the light's at the end of the tunnel for me i've had a wonderful career this has been my 23rd year uh and, and times to get to do things like this it, it's fun and you look and it's funny now when i see older players when um uh sean casey and uh, and Dunn came in the locker room in Cincinnati a couple of years ago, and we laughed and howled. And there was a time when Sean Casey and I, we could not even have a conversation. I mean, it was like <laughs> it was on when when Case saw when Case saw me. C Case would look at me and say, "Well, what point this series we getting hot at each other?" I mean, but it's it's fun now. You you those things, you know. Um, it, it's just we all are getting older and we realize how precious it is in the time we have. And, and it's, you know, we look back on those days now and laugh. Tony LaRusso and I went round and round and round and round. He sees me now and you think we're long lost brothers. We hug. He you know. doesn't feel about me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, but I've, it's, it's funny. Hey, I'm going to tell you, Marty did me a solid this past year. We have a big banquet in Portsmouth. And I, I got up to get, I, they gave me the opportunity to introduce him. And I, I got up and I said, you know, I never thought I'd see the day that not only that I would hug Marty Brenneman, but I actually kissed him on the cheek when he showed up because the last <laughs> couple of years, the guest speaker hadn't showed up and they put me in the spotlight at, at the last minute. So I actually hugged and kissed Marty Brenneman. So he can say that his life is complete by being hugged and kissed by an umpire. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, good stuff right there, guys. Uh, uh, why don't we go one more question right here, Marty? I think the board is back to you. Let's see where we go with it and uh, um, see if you can win this thing once and for all. Bad bounces for 100. Bad oh. bounces for 100. Really going out on a limb there, isn't he, Tom? You're kidding me. Good <laughs> Lord. Come on. <laughs> all right. All right, Marty, runners on second base attempting to steal third. When the batter is hit by the pitch, A, the ball is dead, the batter runner to first, and the runner goes back to second. B, the ball is live, the runner gets to stay at third, and the batter runner is protected all the way to first base. And C, the ball is dead, the batter runner to first, and the runner two gets to stay at third. Ah, mighty. Runner at second, attempting to steal third. There's only one man on base. When the yeah. That, huh? Right? Uh, runner on second. Runner on second, runner. yeah. And runner on second. I steal third. The batter is hit by a pitch, right? I cool. would say the answer to that would be A. And he is correct. Yeah. How about that? Uh, yeah, yeah. As soon as the ball gets hit, it hits a batter, Gibby, the ball's dead, right? Ball's dead. Nothing else can happen. And that's even if he swings at a pitch and it hits him. Dead ball strike. Right. Okay. Got to give Tom one more shot at time. All right, all right, Tom. You know well, what? I, 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 I love. I love a fan. One hundred dollar bet with a four hundred dollar lead. I, hey, Tom. Um, I tried to whip you. I don't give a damn that you're my son. All right, then then we're gonna, we're gonna go for the tie at the minimum here. Five window fielding. Into giving you another shot. Take well, you know, I I think I think Marty, you still got the board, right? I'm gonna, I'm gonna relinquish it to him, Chris. Wow. All right, Tom, where are you going with it? Thank you, thank you very much. I'll go 500 fielding to try and knock this thing up, or just sink to the bottom. Let's go. 
Oh, yes. Okay. All right. Here we go. Take your time. The yeah. batter swings, and he makes contact with the catcher's mitt and then hits the ball in the left field for a base hit. He's thrown out trying to stretch the hit into a double. The call on the play is, A, the batter will be told to return to first base for catcher's interference. B, the out will stand because the batter is protected only to first base. C, timeout is called immediately so there's no official play at second base. D, the manager of the offensive team can decide to request the award for catcher's interference so the runner is placed back at first base. Ooh, man. Mm -hmm. Uh, Yeah, you like your chances here, Marty, don't you? Yeah, I do. Um, I think I do. Oh, man. I'm going to go with – golly, day, it's a tough one. All right. Um, I'm going to say A. All right. The batter will be told to return to first base for catcher's interference. It is not. It is B. The out will stand. The batter's protected only to first base. Okay. Give me, do, do you ever see this kind of play? Yes. Catcher's interference is uh, a lot of times, especially uh, everybody thinks the play's over when catcher's interference happens. It's not. The play continues all the way through. Uh, catcher's interference is null and void once all runners and the batter runner advance one base. But if they don't, then uh, the offensive manager has the election uh, to take the result of the play uh, or, you know, which if they come out normally, we have to walk them through and lead the witness, but they want the result of the play. A lot of times you see this catcher's interference with a runner tagging from third. Uh, when the fly ball's caught, we let the play go through. Uh, and, and then we'll enforce catcher's interference. Well, Marty Brenneman uh, declared the winner right here. Congratulations to you. Right. These young whippersnappers, they just veteran don't know move. what they don't know. Vet- veteran veteran move. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Chris, this has been a lot of fun. Uh, I, I've, I've thoroughly enjoyed it. I've, it's great to see Greg. And yeah. uh, I've, I'll be in touch with you, big boy. I, I miss you on the telephone. Are you guys going to golf clubs any during this? Huh? Are you swinging a golf club any during this? I played one time. I played last week. That's it. Chris has played every day. Every <laughs> day. Hey, you know, a, a little rain not going to bother me here, you know, although it is a little bit chillier than it was down in Arizona. Let's hope that we all get back to playing baseball. Uh, Tom, thank you for joining us. How was it? How, did you think going into this, though, that, uh, hey, I, I mean, I've got the young brain and I know the baseball right. rules. And I'm going to take it to my dad here today. No, most of the time, I'm a pretty confident dude. But when it came to this today, no. I thought I could be in trouble, and and, uh, it is what it is. You know, some days you win, some days you get your tail kicked. Marty, who you got there sitting on your lap? He runs the house. (laughs) Millie. This is the girl right here, boy. Boy, Millie's looking good, too. We already met Rocky earlier, Gibby, uh, or heard uh, Rocky uh, barking a little bit. Um, Millie would love Rocky, believe me. (laughs) Well, good stuff right there. Guys, thanks for joining us. This was really a lot of fun. Gibby, thanks for taking some time out from your your busy schedule. Tom, uh, Marty, as always, I uh, hope to get to see you guys down at the ballpark real soon. Yes, sir. All nice right. You. Thank you. Our Broadcasters Thanks. Rules Challenge, our Titanic Struggle Edition here with the Brennemans, uh, Greg Gibson, and yours truly, Chris Welsh. So long, everybody. <laughs>